Hi, technical problem solved. Okay, so my name is Raphael. I work for the CMS experiment at CERN. Um, and today we just give like a really quick review of how modules work in combination with CMake. Yeah, so we take a really practical approach. I'm not gonna explain how the TS works. I'm not even sure how the TS works. We literally look at a implementation at a module system in Clang. So there are multiple module systems and the one that works with the current C++ syntax where you don't have to do changes to your code and do things like import, export. Um, the main reason why we're looking at this is because modules promise better compilation times and they also deliver this. So if you move to modules, you actually get um, drastically reduced times for you know, parsing and reparsing your headers. Um, so yeah, so this sounds good, but how do we, uh, what are the disadvantages? So it's not just enabling modules. Um, you have to do a few things. One of them is you have to write configuration files for this Clang module system where we have to store the extra information you need for libraries so what headers go together in a module, which needs, uh, what needs to be compiled together and this kind of stuff. There's still some bu a few bugs in the implementation that we need to fix. Um, and there's a big one that I want to focus on, which are system libraries. So system libraries are at the moment not modularized with Clang's module system. Um, for several reasons, mostly because maintainers don't want to modularize them. And well, they, either because they don't have time or because it's very Clang specific at the moment. Okay. So what's the problem with system libraries exactly? So system libraries are then read-only locations, so we can't place the configuration files for Clang there. They come in different versions, they get patched by literally everyone from the operating system to administrator to the user, like everyone is editing these files and changing things and moving headers around. So it's hard to actually write a configuration for them. But if you actually want to build your project, you have to provide a configuration if you want to ha have your system libraries as a module which is important because this is also compilation time to parse those files. Um, okay, so how do we solve this? We have system libraries, they're not modularized, and you have to do this in your build system. Um, it's a lot of work um, to set up a build script that actually modularizes your system for a specific user. Um, so what I'm presenting today is um, a simple script that is modularizing the whole system based on the current user configuration, the way the operating system is laid out and how Clang is configured. Um, the way it works is that it looks at include paths. Um, it goes through the include paths, checks what modules are on the system, looks up which module map that we all ship with the script, fits to the right um, library you have installed, places them there with some tricks based on Clang's virtual file system, which, yeah. Um, so the way you can use it in your project, and the idea is that you make it as simple as possible for end users. You literally just take the script, you add to your CMake configuration that you want to download the script from the GitHub page and you just include it in your CMake script and it sets all the system library modules for your, um, for your CMake project. So in the end, this is the only thing you have to do in your whole, all your system libraries actually will compile with modules and all the system libraries actually get the performance benefits of compiling with modules. Um, yeah. And the way it works is that it literally just, if you include it, it looks at your CMA configuration that you currently have set, your include paths and this kind of stuff. And then based on that, it decides which modules you actually want to use. So if you include boost, include directories, you want to include boost. And this works with everything, like also network shares and all the things people do in their build bots. Um, the other way is, and this is a bit experimental, is um, you can actually use this external. So we have a wrapper script that you can pass as a C++ compiler. Um, you pass it to uh, CMake, and if CMake calls it, we actually um, generate on the fly the modules for your system libraries, and you get the same effect that we compile all the system libraries with, um, with C++ modules. Um, it also has some other small toolies in there, like for example, um, a fallback to non-module compilation if you hit one of the rare um, modules bugs, um, that you know, don't have to disable modules just to hit this one translation unit that doesn't compile with modules. Yeah, um, so for the project, there's a GitHub page that has documentation, examples, and all this kind of stuff. And if you have some system library that we should um, import or support for the system, just write it. We support more or less everything if it's you know, easy to modularize, which most libraries luckily are. Okay, thanks for your attention.